Hi everybody and welcome to the campus of Buffalo State College. It's late August and guess what that means? Training camp is in session. We've got soccer, cross country and football. Welcome to the first edition in 2012-13 of Bango Magazine. I'm your host Tom Kohler. Let's tell you what's on the show today. First up is Jerry Boyce, the athletics director and also the head football coach. Jerry's bringing along Casey Kaz, the junior quarterback from Amherst. And then Nick DeMarsh joins us, women's soccer. And Nick is bringing along Katie Hennis, a senior midfielder. And then I'm gonna wrap up the show with Rudy Pompert, the men's soccer coach. And Rudy's bringing along junior defender, Brent Lenham. So we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're gonna talk football. Stay with us. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bangle Magazine and what a beautiful day here in Western New York and we are outside on Coyer Field, appropriate place to be uh, talking to football. We're going to start with Jerry Boyce, the head football coach of the Bengals, along with Casey Kaz, his junior quarterback and uh, boss. Let's not talk about football right away, let's talk about you as the athletic director and this is always a kind of a fun time to be around campus. Late August, training camps are going and gosh, everybody's undefeated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, but it is. I mean, this is always the, the excitement part of starting a, a school year. And hopefully we, our fall sports uh, set the bar high mm -hmm. because that's what we're, we're, we have those types of expectations of all of our fall sports and, and all of our sports. But it, it'd be nice to have a great, great start with them. And, of course, the activity is what it's all about. Yep. Uh, that's why we're, we're lucky to have the jobs we have because of the young people we continually work with. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's move to football now. And you know, Jerry, I'm, I'm kind of curious where your mindset is now. It's uh, we're coming off uh, your your second second stint here at two and eight. You started four and six, five and five last year. First time in eleven seasons we reach five hundred. The maturation of this program, maybe it's the evolution. Where are, where do you feel this program is right now? It's a great question, Tom, and, and really uh, the next 10 weeks are going to answer it. Uh, Casey will tell you that uh, last year at the end of the season we asked the question, uh, asked it again in May and, and uh, reminded the kids of, the, of that question in August when we started is, have we turned the corner? Uh, internally, we feel we have, uh, but the outside person looking at any sports program has one evaluator and that's win-loss record. Mm -hmm. So five and five isn't saying, well, it looks like they've turned the corner. Uh, a winning record, uh, yeah, they turned the corner. Sure. So the answer comes within the next 10 weeks. Right. Case, this is kind of a tough question. I'll, I'll follow it up with you because you, you're coming off a five and five season. You, you, you weren't around for the down years mm -hmm. and you come from a winning program at, at Sweet Home. Um, do you sense that winning attitude on this program? Yeah, I definitely do, um, especially compared to last year at this time. Um, I know going into the first game, everyone was hoping we were going to beat Cortland, and now I think everyone expects to beat Cortland. So just the attitude of the whole team has definitely changed in a year. Let me ask you about camp and you personally. Uh, last year, you weren't the starter to start off, and I'm sure camp was different than it is this year. You're going in as the starter. Uh, is it, I don't want to assume, is it different and how is it different for you? Um, it's definitely a lot different just from the coaches expecting more of me. I think last year not knowing the plays coming in, um, they didn't expect a ton from me. But now that I, I've played in the system for a year, I know they expect a lot more out of me and I think my teammates do too. Okay. Um, since we finished last year strong, I think everyone knows that we should pick up right where we left off with our last couple of wins. So I think the teammates expect more and just knowing the playbook makes it a lot easier too. You know, one of the things too with, uh, with a good season like last year and these expectations is the so-called bullseye and you're, you're no longer underneath the radar screen. You're on the radar screen. They know who you are. Uh, and so I, I would assume you have to play just a little bit more with anticipation and eagerness and, and ready to go every game. I hope so, Tom. Sure. Uh, you know, last year was last year, and, and we've got to understand that. But uh, these guys made things happen, and that's the expectation now. And, and I'm hoping that when I say, uh, and Casey's heard me say it at the meetings, I feel we have great potential. But it remains potential until we actually get it done. Right. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm anxious to see, and, and you don't know until you line up against somebody you don't know and get after it. Uh, so we're, we're going we're gonna to find out quickly. You have some very skilled people coming back at the so-called skilled positions, especially on offense. And, and even in defense, you've got some linebackers coming back this year. Uh, and my gosh, you scored 36 points a game. There was a blowout in there, but take that away, and you're still averaging 31, 32 points a game. Is that the style of offense we're going to continue to see? Do you consider this a high-powered, quote-unquote, offense? Neither one of you. <laughs> Casey? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, uh, we have a lot of the pieces back from last year, and I know like when we practice, we expect to score and put up points against our own defense, and these guys practice with us every day, so they know what we run. So I think going against other teams that haven't practiced against us day in and day out, we should be able to put up even more points on them. Yep. And I know our offense is capable of a lot of big plays every game. Boss, same same reaction? Yes, Tom, I, I would say so. But in football, uh, you know, I'm, I'm repetitive because it all comes down to the execution. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of teams have great plays and systems, but it all comes down to 11 guys on that field executing that play the way they have to. And given uh, this perceived talent that I think we have, if all 11 do that, then yeah, we can, we can uh, uh, create some havoc out there on there the you football go. field. I'm interested to know your, your reaction or your thoughts on what, what I consider a, a kind of a cohesive team now. You, you know, you're, you're bringing back kids from the roster from last year. We talked about the skilled players on offense, some defensive players. You have the same coaching staff now. Uh, you're into now your fourth, fourth year. Is there a cohesiveness uh, factor working here that people are familiar with one another? And does that change the style of training camp going in? Well, I'll be anxious to hear Casey answer that question because that is, that to me is, is the most important aspect. Mm. Um, I've got to assume that when we line up against whomever it is, home or away, that the talent is equal. Okay. So it's, it's the, the little things that really will determine the outcome of that. And the prime is a group of men who are out there all on the same page, working with and probably most importantly for each other with great trust and faith. And Casey, as, as a team member, would have a better sense of where we are with that from a locker room okay. standpoint and, and all that. So I, it leads to you. Um, yeah, I think just having a bunch of the same guys back, uh, that builds trust because we played with each other before. So I know in camp right now, we already have the trust established mm -hmm. as uh, teammates and players on and off the field. We're, we're friends and stuff, so we all trust each other, and I think it shows on the field with me trusting the linemen to block and trusting the receivers to go up and make plays. Great. Got a, got a couple minutes left, and I'd be remiss in not asking about the move to the uh, Empire 8, and that includes Alfred Salisbury, Utica, Ithaca, Frostburg, Hartwick, St. John Fisher, Buffalo State. Um, what precipitated that move, uh, Jerry? Why is that a good move for Buffalo State College? Well, kind of, kind of the economics of today yep. was a big part of it. Uh, missed class time was a, was a factor as well. And kind of getting back with um, playing in New York State. Yeah. Uh, kids get a chance, they know each other, and, and we're recruiting a lot of the same people. And they go to this school, and there's that familiarity with each other, which as to the rivalry mm -hmm. of the games. Uh, the close proximity adds to increased uh, interest in fans and things of that nature. Easier for parents and relatives and everybody to travel to those games. So I think it was for all the right reasons. Um, and now we, we uh, start to find out about some new opponents. Absolutely. A minute left. Um, if you were to put your finger on one factor that needs to maybe shift over from last year to this year that would create more wins, what would that be? Well, I, I guess, it, it, again, it come down to that, uh, things we just talked about, I guess, yep. Tom, because it's, it's how well we uh, use that kind of way we ended last season um, and, and put it together uh, for 60 minutes of a football game. There you go. Jerry, thanks for being with us. You're about ready to go on the practice field after soccer, Casey. Thank you very much. Good luck this season. We're going to take a quick break, but when we, before we do, I'm sorry, don't forget the first football game is Saturday, this Saturday, September 1, right here uh, against Cortland at noontime. Tickets are just five bucks, so come on out and watch the Bengals. Take on Cortland Saturday, five dollars. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, women's soccer. Stay with us.
All right, let's talk a little football, as they say in Europe, a little soccer here in America. Women's soccer joins us now, and Nick DeMarsh and Katie Hennis. Nick, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Nice Tom. to be outside, isn't it? Absolutely. This is fabulous weather. Let's start with a overview. First time on the show, obviously, first first show of the year. What do you got out there? What can we expect? Well, it's always really exciting this time of year. Everybody has their hopes and dreams, and it's a time of the year where everybody's goal setting and um, trying to figure out what we can do. Right. Um, we've got a lot of seniors back this year that have been with me for four years. We've got a fresh crop of talented and excited freshmen. You do. So um, things are looking very hopeful. Okay. Uh, let's talk about that roster a little bit. It, from my count, we have five seniors, six juniors, and nine freshmen. That was as of today. From a coaching standpoint, is that the kind of mix that that you kind of like uh, in, in your roster? Well, we have two senior captains returning, so that's always good. They, yep. They've they've been through the battles, and uh, they can lead. Um, we've got a lot of players that are returning to us that have been kind of waiting their time, and um, who have been kind of playing the role, and now will step into a more of a, a leadership role and get more minutes on the field. So that's okay. always nice to see what those players can do. Um, but more importantly, I think some of our freshmen are, are really exciting. We've got some a couple of kids that I think are going to actually become starters um, probably immediately. Wow, so that's fantastic. always fun. That's great. Let me ask you, Katie, uh, this roster, your last season, uh, how do you go into this training camp? You've played four years for us now. On your way out to graduate, is this a bittersweet moment for you? You know, you're on the field, but it's also going to be your last training camp. How do you go into this? this whole season? Um, well, it's definitely better, bittersweet, but um, I'm looking forward to this year, hoping that we can win a lot of games and um, got a lot of new girls that look great and right. um, just hoping we have a great year. Yeah, super. The, uh, the mention of goals, uh, I don't know if you can speak to that or not. What kind of goals are there right now for this program? Well, we, you know, we, we scaffold our goals and then okay. we have the minimum goals, of what we want to do and then our dream goals and obviously every year I say it and, and I'm not ashamed of it ultimately our dream goal is to win a national championship absolutely are we at that caliber right now as a team maybe not but we can think about it right and we can try to set the rest of the goals to hopefully get us there in time um, ultimately the real goal is to escape our conference win the conference and go to the NCAA see what the other conferences have to offer us right. um, but the, the bare minimum we want to get back on track with a winning record, and we want to get back into the playoffs where we belong. Let me ask you something. I, I, we didn't discuss this, but how is this conference compared to other conferences in the country in terms of women's soccer? Uh, it's always rated top five. It's wow. been as high as three. Um, there, there isn't a bad team in the conference. Every okay. team in our conference that goes outside of our conference does very well. Okay. Um, and there's not a light game. You can't go away anywhere right. and, and have a walkthrough. Gotcha. So, you know, we talked about the roster a little bit. Uh, I understand you picked up a goaltender or a goalkeeper this year, this year from the parking lot, or we don't have to do that anymore. Tell, tell us about that. Well, you had a little trouble last year with, with goal, keeping goalkeepers uh, healthy, correct? Well, <laughs> we had some injuries. We had some academic issues. We had some homesickness from a freshman. Yep. We just had some bad luck. We All had, the stuff that goes into intercollegiate yeah. athletics. We had four goalkeepers last year that turned into zero, and then we had someone come and fill in for us. Yep. We had field players in the goal. And that really... Katie, did you play goal last no, year? No, I did oh. not. I was not the lucky one. <laughs> okay. Well, it, you know, and you don't want to, as a coach, hide behind Absolutely. or make an excuse Absolutely. for your performance. Things happen and you have to react. Correct. Um, we brought in two freshman goalkeepers. One of our goalkeepers who broke her hand last year, um, Linda Banfield, Buckets Banfield. She's back to help us and uh, Great. she's right now our starter. So, Great. we, you know, we have a little depth at the position and we're hoping that we can stay healthy. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you there. Five conference losses last year by one goal. Boy, that's, uh, oh, that's hard to take. How do, you, how do you turn those one goal losses into one goal wins this season? Well, I yeah. think goalkeeping helps. Okay. Um, it's hard to ask a field player to make the big save in the big moment. Sure particularly if they've never played. Um, and also in terms of your mentality, when you always step back to defend because you have your field player in there, it doesn't help you win those games. You're always kind of glass is half empty. Mm -hmm. But details, mm -hmm. you know, when, you, when we look at our statistics and we analyze what we did last year and all these tight games, you know, a lot of the statistics are on our side 
we just didn't get the end product. So how can we sharpen the small details to get things right? One of the steps we're taking this year is nutrition. Uh, after every practice, the girls have to report to the locker room and they have to recharge the battery with some kind of a protein shake mm -hmm. or at least 240 calories directly after practice so that they don't get run down. That should help their mental and their physical Absolutely. stamina in the long haul over a course well, of the season. Well, if you feel good physically, you're going to feel good mentally. That's I, I right. would assume, being and an it, old jock that I am. And if you get fatigued, you know, you're prone to injury. Right. So, Absolutely. Um, and and your, your mental game as well. You sure. Know, if, if, you're, if you're fatigued, if you're tired, if you're hungry, you're going to make mental mistakes on the field that it cost you a game. You've been with this guy for four years now. Anything change over those four years uh, that you can um, tell us about? Well, when I was a freshman, there was a lot of great girls, a lot of uh, good center mids and I always had a fight for that spot so <laughs> now that I have that spot um, <laughs> you know I think we have a great defense this year I think we have right. strong forwards we're gonna take a lot more shots this year so I think we're good I can tell you're excited I mean you, before before excited. we went on the air you were kind of shy and look at you, you were, she's, she's ready to go coach let's <laughs> go know. play right now listen we got about a minute and a half left you're going out to California and I'm like California and if people saw that on the schedule why would Buff State go out to California in a minute and a half, how did sure. that all happen and who are you playing it's out It's an there? interesting story. Every coach is on a listserv and coaches are always looking for games. They send it out to every coach in the country and apparently in California there aren't a lot of D3s. So okay. we send it out to everybody. And I said, well, we can't really afford that, but in a few years we might. So me and the coach planned for two years in advance and that gave us two years to raise the funds, do fundraising. There you go. And we put it all together and um, interestingly enough, that coach is not coaching them anymore. But we still had the contract, still had the schedule. and hopefully they come to play us next year, and we keep this relationship alive. Excited about going out west? So excited. Ever been in California? Uh, I've been there once, but um, I'm definitely excited to go there with my team. I've never done that before. Fantastic. And there's a little time just, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to play some games, but maybe uh, get away for a little bit and enjoy the area. Little beach soccer, Tom. Little beach soccer, Nick. I wish <laughs> I was there. That's awesome. Well, watch that Achilles tendon. You're in that, you're in that age group where you can yeah. rupture that. All right. Nick, thanks for being on. Katie, thanks for being Thank on. You. Have a great season, your final season, okay? We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have more soccer, this time from the men's and Rudy Pompert. Stay with us. Well, we don't have the Tim Hortons Player of the Week. We have the Tim Hortons Teams of the Week because, well, we haven't played any games yet. So uh, I want to recognize the women's lacrosse team, one of just 61 Division III schools to have a 3.0 or better GPA. Actually ended with a 3.14, with 18 ladies having a 3.0 or better and eight ladies having a 3.50 GPA or better. And by the way, they uh, ended the season last year ranked 20th in the country. And then also, uh, we have the swimming and diving programs uh, were honored as Scholar All-America teams uh, with a 3.0 or better GPA. Uh, the women uh, had a 3.28 GPA and the men were at 3.13. So congratulations to women's lacrosse and both men's and women's swimming and diving programs for their outstanding work in the classroom. And I am joined now back on Coyer Field uh, with Rudy Pompert and Brett Lenham from Men's Soccer. And Rudy, nice to see you again. Uh, beautiful day, isn't it? It's Boy, you're getting fantastic. a lot of good work in here. I'm sure Brett's loving it too. So yeah. let's start. We got football in the background. Let's talk. Let's talk okay. European football. Real okay? football. There you go. Real football. <laughs> little overview on the team uh, since it's the first show and the first time on. Mm -hmm. um, well, we uh, we look a little bit different. We we you know we have a lot of new freshmen. We got a couple of transfer students, and I think. Uh, you know, especially if you look at the starting lineup, that could be, you know, over half of the new players. So, um, you know, what is a good thing? Um, because, uh, um, you know, I think we're a little bit better. Sure. So they're making us a little bit better. We're a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, and uh, so, you know, it looks positive, but, you know, I, I've decided to throw expectations out of the window. It's only about goals. We have another week it's, before uh, we find yeah, out, right? So, exactly. Brett, from from your perspective, you've been here now three years. Uh, how does how does it look out there? Uh, we had a great preseason. I think we have a good group of uh, core juniors and seniors on the team who have been here for a while and a great recruiting class. So okay. I'm excited about. And by the, the way, season. Brent, your nose is getting a little bigger as we talk. <laughs> yeah. Not not Pinocchio style, but this way. I mean, did something happen? I mean, what happened? A little black and blue right now. Yeah, definitely. I just got elbowed in the face, actually, during <laughs> practice before this, and uh, 
felt a little bit of a crack, so we'll check that out after <laughs> after the interview. Well, maybe. first of all, we are so glad that you're <laughs> uh, even here uh, because no. most years we don't even see you. You are. Uh, it's not because you don't like to play soccer. It's yeah, because you want to play, but you can't play, right? I've had a little bit of tough luck my sophomore year. <laughs> um, I tore my ACL, came back strong my junior year, and unfortunately in the third game of the year, oh, I my gosh. injured my foot and ankle and was out for most of the season. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, here's what we ought to do with him. Just don't practice them and just play them in the games, we'll okay? He's, he's a gamer, rep. as they say, Yeah, right? we'll keep exactly. him in bubble wrap uh, during the week. And then <laughs> a bubble wrap, very game, nice. You know. very, the bubble man, okay. Yeah. And Rudy, let's just go back one year. If, if you could change something from last year to produce this year uh, success, yeah. what would that be? Well, it, last year... Um, when you when you we started off great, we were six and one I think, yeah. or, or five and one, and we ended with a six nine record. Um, we had a period where, um, you know, we would lose in a dumb way. Okay. All right. It games sure. that you lose two to one, and then you look at the goals and you're like, you know, how how is that possible? Right. And I think it was a little bit of concentration, maybe still being a little bit young, and I think also missing a couple of players who are just a little bit better and um, um, you know I think that we are you know and of course we're only in the preseason but it feels like we don't we're better at that now okay. we're, we we will not make those dumb mistakes why we lose 2-1 I mean the, the games in the Sunia conference are so tight that if you make a dumb mistake and they score from it it's going to be very hard to uh, make that up sure so um, we got a little bit too many goals against I think um, and you got to sc score a little bit more. Okay. So, you know, when I say we don't have expectations, but we have goals, um, we want to make a couple of more goals mm -hmm. this year, and we want to get a lo little less goals right. against. And if you only talk about a swing of maybe, you know, six or eight goals, that's the difference between being in the playoffs right. and having a winning record and everybody really being really happy. And Brent, do um, you, you agree with your coach on that? I know he's sitting right next to you and you better agree with him. But I, I mean, is that is that I a good assessment from last year to this year, do you think? I would definitely say so. There yeah. was just a couple moments I recall that uh, seemed like a little bit of mental lapse out there. They were just stupid mistakes that can easily be cut out. And right. from what I've seen so far this year, I think we're on a much better track. And knowing that, is is this camp different than last year's yeah. camp, and, and, and how so? Well, um, I'm always about, you know, you, you uh, become a better soccer player by playing soccer, all right? So even when you work on conditioning, um, you play soccer. I mean, you condition for soccer by playing soccer. So it used to be always from the first moment to the last moment of practice, everything was with a ball. Well, now I do something every practice, for about 20 minutes without a ball. Okay. And it's not very pleasant. Um, they, they, <laughs> okay. they, there's just, in a smart way, we do a little bit more, you know, running, sprinting, that kind of work with the ball, of, uh, without the ball. And I think, and that's a little bit, you know, when they, they always talk like about team building, for example, and right. it's all, you know, when you think about team building, it's, you know, locking arms and singing Kumbaya, my lord. The best team building is going to, through things together that are really not that much fun Correct. and I kind of added that element a little bit more okay. and you know it's a little bit against my nature but it's best for the team so okay. I just have to do that great so um, that's a little bit different and then our style of play is a little bit different and, and, and let me get to that in a minute it's not much fun what he's talking about and don't get into the specifics but well, no I don't fun? Wanna, uh, I'm sort of in the middle on this I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> on his bad side. But, Being the uh, politician. All right, we've got about a minute left. In a minute, tell me about this new style, this new Rudy Pompert coaching style. Well, it's just a little bit more direct. You know, I, um, you, you know, you have these ideals and uh, about how you want things to be done and how you want to play, but you just have to realize that you're not Barcelona or Real Madrid. <laughs> you have to get the ball to the forwards a little bit quicker, and you know we cannot you know set up a scoring chance with uh, after 15 passes right we, we just don't have the place for that so it's a little bit quicker forward it's a little bit quicker to the you know towards the goal um, so we get in scoring positions quicker okay. that's kind of the, the whole difference gotcha. so a um, little bit more direct okay you know still trying to do it the right way uh, not just close your eyes and hoof the ball forward um, but it's a little bit more direct 
And gotcha. I think that will fit us a little bit better, too. Well, guys, so. best of luck to you this season. And, Rudy, not bad for a sore throat. I thought you came I in know. loud and clear. That's what Bruce brings in. Everything, all right. I'll get you some honey <laughs> in a minute, okay? Brett, thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate it, and best of luck. Thank yeah. you. That's going to wrap it up for Bangle Magazine. For the first edition of Bangle Magazine, thanks to football, women's soccer, and men's soccer, and everybody out here at Coyer Field. We'll see you again in two weeks for more. Bangle Magazine.